chapter 14, verse number 12. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to read verse 12 through verse number 16. I want to just speak to the church for a little while this morning. I'm so glad everybody's here. Amen. If you're looking for a place to do something in the kingdom of God, I encourage you to come. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I believe the church is the body. I believe Christ is the head. I believe that the higher of title you got in a church, the greater a servant you ought to be. Amen. You're going to say that you're this or that in that church? You ought to have fruit that's produced by it to serve somebody. Serve this community and to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. How many knows that? Amen. How many sees the reality of the world we live in today? Amen. How many has um, heard about the mall shooting out in Seattle, Washington? Amen. What was it? Four daughters and one son shot by a man. Ran in there and then ran out. Amen. Isn't that sad? Isn't that sad? How many of your generation, you see stuff like that? We have become so numb. Our churches have become complacent and numb because of Seattle, Washington. But when it's across the street behind your I-75 and it's the Florence Mall and it's somebody you knew, it'll shake you to the core. And then you'll get concerned. I'm already concerned. I believe that church has got to rise back up and, it's, and start fighting in this battle again. So much going on in Charlotte, North Carolina. How many have seen that? I think every night it's not over with yet. So much protest going around. We've seen it in other cities across America. And if anything, regardless how you pick sides, and I don't really pick sides in this stuff, I believe God will reveal the truth in the end. Whenever we came into this church building here, we want to call it the upper room in spirit and in truth. And I believe the church above everything has got to get back to those two things. See, a lot of churches that seem to have a zeal, but they have very little knowledge, very little truth. Seen a lot of churches that's got the truth, but they have no spirit. Why do I say all that? Because it's a spirit that's in control in America right now. We need a counter spirit, and that counter spirit being the Holy Spirit that's in God's church. I believe that with all my heart. I'm going to read, and I'm going to preach this morning. Maybe the message is a little bit different for a Sunday morning. But I just felt led to preach this way this morning. I want you to look at Isaiah chapter 14 and verse number 12. The Bible says, How thou, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will set also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Verse 16, They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? that this shake kingdoms. How many is familiar with this, this reading this morning? Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Father, I thank you, God, Lord, for the word that you are given, God. I ask you, dear Lord, take this clay that I am. Lord, Heavenly Father, quicken it and bring life into it, God, for thou art the potter. Lord, I give you all the praise and all the glory. I need your help this morning. And let the church say, Amen. How thou art fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. We're talking about the devil there. How thou art cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations. I, I, I want to preach just a little, a little bit this morning about a weak nation and why we see it the way that we do. How many believe that what I'm reading to you this morning holds a lot of precedence that we have become weak? I don't know if you've ever considered what it takes to become weak in your own life. Maybe sickness will make you weak. I'm 50 years old and I still I still go like I'm 20 or 25. Brother Roland, same way. He's 85 years old and comes in here whenever we was here and just work hard and just go all day and not complain. But I, if we get sick, we become weak. Our nation has become sick with sin. 
Many don't call us sin no more. They've become politically correct with all the things that they've done. But if we don't do something and get back to the doctor and begin to get healed, we'll just become more weak and more weak. The Bible talks about the Lucifer. The Lucifer they beheld him. He only came to weaken the nation. He can't destroy it. It is God that will set up that nation and bring it down. But if He can bring a compromise into your life, into this nation, into this church, He'll weaken it. We've seen it through all the generations. We've seen times that we were strong. Families were strong. Churches were strong. A nation was strong. But during the last little bit, we've seen that it's been weakened. The Bible says there will come a day when they'll narrowly look on Him. One of these days, I believe of all my heart, all this this thing that we blame the devil for and blame everybody else for, we'll realize it was simply a result of the sin in our own lives that caused us to compromise the truth and to believe a lie. We're living in a generation today where many have, have compromised God's Word and truth. I feel the Lord in here this morning. It may be hard to preach. I thought last night, God, you'll have to help me to give me the words that you want me to speak this morning. But I believe they're needful. I believe the church needs to be the one that will rise back up and speak to. You listen to what the Bible said, which did us weak in the nation. I wrote down a couple things that I want to speak about that just affected our nation this morning. America. Some were old enough to remember some of these things happened before he was born. So I'll just give you a couple of things that I believe weakened the nation. That the devil came in a long time ago and he's not stopped yet. He's, he's fired up, there's no doubt about it. But on June the 17th of 1963, the Supreme Court declared the school prayer and Bible reading is unconstitutional. That was June of 1963 that the Supreme Court of the land, those who dictate our, our Constitution, Brother Harry will remind me many times, they don't write laws, they're supposed to only interpret laws. When man's law supersedes that of God's law, we have become weak. We've seen a nation get weaker and weaker and weaker. Why? Because the, the reading of the Bible and, and the prayer in school has been taken out. It's not just something that happened in one school. It affected a whole nation. One nation under God. When you let the enemy come in in one area of your life, he's never satisfied. He'll move just like a fire and burn up everything. In 1980, how many is here was alive in 1980? Most of us. The Ten Commandments were removed from the public arena. The Ten Commandments. I spoke about that, I think, Sunday night when I was preaching a little bit. That the Supreme Court, when they ruled to remove the Ten Commandments out of, out of the public arena, it was because of this reason. That if people read them, they might just do them. That was the whole ruling. That, that may sound a little funny, but you can go look it up yourself. They said if you post the Ten Commandments in school and the kids read them as they're going up and down the hallways, they might just obey them. They might just do them. Therefore, we cannot let the Bible, we cannot let God's law uh, influence our little children. Ah, He come to make the nation weak. He weakened the nation. The Bible says that there'll come a day, though, that there I'll narrowly even look at him as strong as you think the devil is today. I'm telling the church, wake up. He's not that strong. We believe something that is not true. Amen. Bible on the Bible. The statistics. I, I, I want to give you a very fascinating one. I, I believe that church leaders ought to. I believe this is as much a part of preaching the gospel as anything else is. I want you to listen a moment. How many has heard of Roe versus Wade? Uh, probably everybody. How many knows what it actually means? I bet the devil don't even want me to tell this this morning, but I'm going to anyways. In 1969, a lady named Norma L. McCorvey. How many has heard that name? Norma McCorvey. That's the lady. They give her an alias name of Jane Roe. But her name was Norma McCorvey. She got pregnant with her third 
child. She had already had two. She had family that lived in Dallas, Texas. She went to Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas, and during this, uh, this time period, 1969, had a law. And they said, in the event of rape, you can get a legal abortion. So what Miss McCorby did was she went to visit family in Dallas during this pregnancy. Remember, this is her third pregnancy. And she went down there and she said, I have been raped because she wanted to abort this child. When she got to the abortion clinic, they asked her to produce the police report. She could not produce the police report. And so then she went down and she tried to find an illegal abortion clinic because there was a time it was illegal. Oh, the illegal abortion clinic had been closed in 1969 by the police. I thank God that there are police who do what's needful. Now let's listen a moment. So she filed a lawsuit. She went to two attorneys, both of them being female, and she filed a lawsuit. But before the lawsuit could become final, she gave birth to that third child. The attorney said, we're not going to stop the fight. That was in 1969. In 1970, they filed a, a suit against Texas under the alias of Jane Rowe. The Dallas attorney was named Henry Wade, thus becoming... Roe versus Wade because that baby now she's got a child already born a year old I don't understand how much evil could be but the, I imagine that someday that child would grow up and they would have to ask their mama even after I was born you were still fighting this fight wasn't you they went all the way to the Supreme Court in 1973 I'm preaching today that their all that Lucifer has come that a weak in the nation in 1973, seven out of two of uh, uh, the Supreme Court justice voted on the side of Roe and changed all states. Yes, come on. Somebody say amen. 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 We're not talking about just the state of the great state of Texas. Becky and I lived there for four years, that Lone Star State. We're not talking about just that because once the enemy plants a seed, once the enemy comes in to try to weaken something, it will infect the world. had to say that it is the ideal. It is the belief. There's a word for you, belief. It is the belief that our language ought not to offend the sensitive. That's why we don't have a fireman. We have a firefighter. What if the fireman is a man? Can we have a firewoman and a fire? No, we need a firefighter. I'm a mail carrier. Come on. I used to be a mail man. I didn't change. <laughs> I'm still a mail man. But I no longer can tell people I'm a mail man. Yes, right. Come on, man. I have to tell them I'm a mail carrier. Because it's the belief that our language ought not to oppress uh, uh, the sensitive. That's why if I was gay and I wanted to go into a church and somebody wanted to preach about a man ought not to lie with another man as he does with womankind, that that would be sensitive. Oh, somebody preach! I want to title this today. I'm sorry, but this is the church. I'm sorry, but this is the church. Houston, 2016. What year is it? 2016. Oh, okay. It's getting close to something, ain't it? Issue subpoenas. Demanding subpoenas. You know what that is? Issue subpoenas demanding pastors hand over transcripts of their sermons. Yes. How many's heard that? Amen. How many remembers that this year in 2016 in Houston, Texas, that the mayor? Yes. It's not political correctness to tell you the rest of the story. Yes. Isn't that what Paul Harvey became famous for? Saying, and now the rest of the story. That mayor was the first openly lesbian yeah. mayor in their history. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. 
He comes to weaken the nation. Yes. You may not know that. Yes. So this mayor, this lady up there that is an open, openly lesbian, the first one in their history, subpoenaed the court system and told all of their church pastors, I, I read all this myself. Somebody ought to take notice. Uh, it don't happen across the street, but it's happening across the state uh, that somebody said, we want a copy of all, all of your sermons uh, to be handed in, uh, and especially those on homosexuality. I told my wife last night, she said, what are you going to preach on tomorrow? I said, Isaiah 14, verse 16. And I read it, and she goes, that's heavy. It's too heavy for me. I, I can feel it up here trying to preach it. But some of the churches said no. Oh, oh, oh. Some said no. said somebody it only took one to get it out it only takes one to get it back somebody said you've gone too far now because I'm sorry but we're the church I'm sorry but this is the church they stopped it they'll narrowly look on you one day devil you may think you big, but you ain't all that. That's right. I come to preach yeah. and to preach power in the church. Yeah. He ain't all that. Yeah. He ain't all that. Yeah. In June of 25th of 2011, Becky and I pastored in Franklin during that time period. All the churches across America was urged to read the Quran from their pulpit. On that Sunday morning. How many remember that? Yeah. They called it Black Sunday. I'm not here to be politically correct this morning. I'm sorry. This is the church. Yeah. Jesus said in the book of Matthew up on this rock, I will build my church. Oh, I know that there's a lot of those. I'll tell you the truth. I coexist. I don't have a problem coexisting. I, I, I buy Pepsi two doors down. I don't, I don't, I'm not offended. I, I, I really ain't. I don't have a problem coexisting. But I'm going to tell you something. If I don't ask you to change, don't you ask me to change. Hey, hey, hey. In 2011, all churches urged to read the Quran. Churches in 26 states did. He came to weaken the nation. Of course, by this time, we've been through so many wars. You know, is it, is it a boy? Is it a girl? I don't know. Is it he? Is it a she? Is it she? He? He? She? I mean, you know, what? what is it? And to, we've got so many battles going on right now. It's it's whatever he... Do you, do you know that you ought to go read what the, the what the head of the pediatric, pediatrics of America says about parents allowing their children to call themselves a, a transgender? Do you know what the head... I, I dare you go home today and get you a computer and pull up what the head... Over the P. I'm not talking about a church. I ain't talking about the Baptist or the Methodist or Pentecostal or Catholic. Go read what the head of pediatrics in America had to say. Right. They said it, it is child neglect. It is child endangerment. See, when a mama tells her sonny, it's okay, son, call yourself a girl. Or tell that girl, it's okay, call yourself a boy. The pediatrics said they ought to be put in jail for child endangerment. Say so that's recklessness. And the church ain't saying nothing. The church has got to stand up and say something. The church has got to. Amen. 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 LGBT. I bet you guys didn't think you'd get in this Sunday morning, did you? LGBT. Oh affirming God. Christian denominations. Affirming Christian denominations. Uh, watch for that word. The watchman on the tower always send out a warning. Ain't that what they said in the Bible? Watch for these affirming churches. Yes. Compromising churches. 
It's not just your denomination that you hold true to. Amen. I went through last night and read a great big list of them. Didn't I? Read, I mean, pages. You want to find a, a, a anything goes, I can be who I want to be church? Go to one of them affirming churches. They've got all denominations. Yes, they do. they got the Methodist and the Baptist and Southern Baptist. and the, they got the Pentecostal. What was that word? Re-something. Redefining or something. Pentecostal movement. Huh? They, they, they redefining themselves. That, that wasn't the right word, but it meant basically the same thing. I, I, but I've come to tell you today, there'll come a day after a while yes. that they'll narrowly look at that devil. They'll look at him and say, it was you. You caused the nation to tremble. It was you who weakened the nation. That's what he said in the Bible, and I believe the Bible. But guess what it don't say? It didn't say you weakened the church. <laughs> no, it didn't say that at all. It said that the more they were oppressed out in Egypt, the more they multiplied. The more the taskmaster said, I'm glad you're here. The more that taskmaster said, you're going to have to work harder in your generation. The Bible says the more they multiplied. I come to tell this church this morning, I'm on the move. I, I'm serving that devil notice. Oh, my God. Somebody ought to get buttered up in this house today. I'm not weak. I ain't sick. I've got a healer. He made me whole. May weaken my nation. Have to sit by and watch teenagers in high school now that at one time wanted to pray at prom and pray for their football game. And then somebody told them long enough, you can't do that. I don't know where the church was at. I, I really don't think somebody ought to go back again. Our, 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 our son. Our son was told you have to read Harry Potter. Oh, every time I mention Harry Potter in church, I get back last, don't I? I guess somebody comes after church. That offended me. I love the Harry Potter series. That's okay. Go ahead and love it. I don't. Don't tell me what to do. But the school system down here in Lloyd High School, right down there in Erlanger, said that they made it, that it was for a grade, that it was mandatory in that school system, that every kid had to read the, the Harry Potter series. Guess what? Here we come. <laughs> Excuse me. Where's your principal? What do you want to see him for? It's time. Because uh, we're concerned parents. Amen. Concerned parents. Make it plain. Come on. Uh, you've got concerned parents here. We had a meeting. We went in and told them. Our children ain't reading it. That's right. Our children ain't reading that garbage. Yeah. Well, what do you mean? Every other parent. Every other parent's going to let their kids. What makes you guys different? I ain't saying we're different. I'm just saying our kids ain't reading that garbage. We're Christians and we don't allow that stuff. You don't have to compromise. You will. Not me. I'm not compromising no more. I ain't backing up no more. You better figure out a way to make things right. Why? Because not only am I Christian, I do stand up when they have the national anthem. That is my flag. I'm free in this country. The land of the bride. Well, guess what? They changed it. They allowed them to read something else. That's right. Amen. Somebody ought to say something every once in a while. But the battle wasn't over. The battle wasn't over. It wasn't long after that we got this letter. You remember this? Went up to the church. They subpoenaed us this time out of the church. The school said, we're concerned school teachers. I said, good. What are you concerned about? Your child. Um, we've tested your child and we're going to put your child in special ed. Oh, wow. Well, God had a plan. Because my mama put herself through school raising four of us. Yes. With a pastoring husband. Drove every night across the mountain to come to college and back to Whitley City. Because she majored in special ed, she became the number one in the state as sign language. She taught in colleges. And she was on vacation visiting, visiting me and Becky that day. Amen. They said, who is that lady? I said, that's my mama. I want 
her here. Well, how's she related to the subject? She's the grandparent. Yeah. Oh, okay. My mama looked at him and said, by law in the state of Kentucky, you tested him? Because without notification to the parents, they cannot be tested. Right. Tested. You've already broke the law, and you're in violation right now. That same child graduated college. Oh, with honors. Oh, my God. He'll come to weaken the nation. Is this all right this morning? That's right. Amen. He came to weaken the nation. I'm, I think I'm going to fight for it. Amen. I think I will. Amen. I'm sorry, but this is a church. Amen. Mm. Amen. Yeah, it, it, it's not about... Uh, if somebody gets offended, let me tell you how strong I am. 50 years old, a buck 65, something, 165 pounds, something, I don't know. I'll tell you how strong I am. I can read it and not get offended. I can read it and say, oh God, let me change. Let me be made conformable into His image. Oh God, I'm not lying up. I'll tell you what the truth is. The truth is they're believing the devil, and the devil's telling them that God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Oh, they need is a doctor when you get sick. Amen. I've been there. I've got sick in my natural body. I just don't feel like getting up. I don't. I don't feel like doing things. You know, I. I, I just don't. And, and and I've been there. I've been spiritually sick too. Luke 21 over there, brother Bobby. Yeah. All right. Now look here. The Bible says in Luke chapter 21, I want you to look over there for just a moment and break down at verse number 10. Love God's Word. It don't offend me. My God, it's not about getting God to conform to me. It's about getting me to conform to God. Yeah. Amen. God's so much bigger than me. He's so much bigger than all of us. I'm glad I serve a good God this morning. I do. I'm glad I serve a God who can give life and abundant life. I, I sure am. It's not about does the laws of the land have the presidents. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, we're not careful to answer you. If you kill us, you kill us. That's, that's the way the Bible is. I'll tell you what. After man kills you, you still got something that waits on that other side. I'd rather serve God and let man do what man's going to do. Look down here at verse number 10 of Luke 21. I'm coming to a close with this. It said, Then said he unto them, this is Jesus speaking, he said, Nation shall rise against nation. Oh, we're seeing that in America. Notice there's no S on either one of them. It's not nations shall rise against nations. We're beyond that. We're not fighting in Vietnam or, or Korea. Or we're not fighting in Germany or in Japan. We're fighting each other. Yeah. Preach, brother. I said, we're fighting each other. Jesus said, nation shall rise against nation. Husband against wife. Children against the father. Children against the mother. Mama and daddy against the children. I, I don't know if you're hearing the battle of, uh, of drugs that's going on with heroin. I think it was Becky came to me yesterday and said two children in the same family died on the same day from heroin. How would you like to be my mom and dad this morning? There's a war going on that weakens the nation. Now listen a moment. A kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilence and fearful sights. My God, isn't it fearful? Just turn on the TV. And great signs shall be from heaven. Now, I really wasn't intending to read all that, but I wanted to read this next part. But all that was needful because Jesus said it's going to get ugly. Amen. But look what he says to yes. you in just a moment. Yes. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you uh -huh. and persecute you, yes. delivering you up to the synagogue and in the prisons. Being brought before kings. Well, that's the mayor of Houston. And rulers. Yes. For my namesake. Yes. 
Whatsoever you shall ask in his name. For his name. That's what they want. Authority. Yes. Amen. They want authority. Not Christ having all authority. Just because his father said all judgment was given unto him. Doesn't mean those of this world want to be judged by him. Yes. So they'll come and deliver you up to kings and rulers. Now look. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. You mean God's going to turn this for my favor? You mean if I stand up for Him now, He'll stand up for me later? You mean if I'm not ashamed of Him before men, He won't be ashamed of me before my Father? You mean He's going to turn this thing to my testimony? Oh, here we go. Now read on. Settle it, therefore, in your hearts not to meditate before what ye shall answer. This is why our church is in trouble. Keep reading. For I will give you a mouth. Yes. Well, brother, I don't know what to do. Pray. Amen. God will give you a mouth. The yeah. Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Yeah. Say what? So. Amen. Say what? Amen. So. Amen. You have to comply. Amen. So. You have to do this. Amen. So. Amen. Well, you're going to go to jail. You go. Know. So. Amen. What's wrong with you? Are you messed up? Amen. So he said, "Let the redeemed of the Lord say so." Amen. Yes. Let them say so. Amen. Now look what he says. I will give you a mouth in verse number fifteen and wisdom, Amen. Mm -hmm. which all your adversaries, how many? Not one or two. Oh. Not well. We're going to we're going to lose a few battles. I'm tired of hearing Christians talk yeah. that way. Amen. We're going to fight in this good fight. Because Paul said, I fought the good fight. Amen. But you know we ain't going to win. Well, hold on a minute. I thought he said, which oh. all of your adversaries. Amen. They're not reading that book. Amen. Okay. Amen. He's not going in special ed. Okay. We got so much fear that when we get the letter in the mail, yes. we're already compromising between each other on the way to the school. What are we going to do? Well, we don't want to get them thrown out. And we don't want to, we don't want to be publicly seen. We don't want people to know it was us. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Uh -uh. They ain't gonna like you so. Now look on, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. The truth will stand when everything else fails. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but not one jot or tittle of this word shall ever pass away. In the end, there will be truth. And what happens in the end? They will narrowly look on that devil and say it was you. You was the man that caused the whole nation to tremble and be afraid. I've got good news for you. I'm sorry, but I'm the church. Oh! We're the church, and we're not going to back up, and we're not going to bow down. Now look what it says. And ye shall be betrayed. Look down there at verse 17. You should be hated. If I already know this going into the battle, because the problem is, is most churches are not engaging in the battle. I already told you I'm a veteran. Before I ever went to Iraq, before I ever fought against the vast Republican Guard of Saddam Hussein, we sat down and studied pictures of their weapons, studied tactics. I was in the intelligence branch out of Fort Hood. We got pictures of all their leaders. I didn't go over there with the impression, oh, I gotta be politically correct. Don't want to offend these sensitive people. They're not pointing no gun at them. My goodness, let them know that we're Americans. Yeah, we're just powder puff and all this kind of stuff. No, we're the church. I'm sorry. We have a real enemy, and I will engage in it. And he said, you'll be hated. I already knew I was hated. I, I still went to war. I still went to battle. I already knew that people did not like me, that people had an agenda that did not include my agenda. I already knew I represented something bigger than myself. I represented a kingdom that had to go against another one. I am here. Bible says in verse 18 and 19 and you I'm, I'm closing I said that but 
That's a good conjunction. But there shall not a hair of your head perish. Stop being afraid. He will give you a mouth. And if you can't think of nothing fancy to say, there's two letters. An S and an O. And it identifies who the redeemed are at least. Because he said, let the redeemed say so. And look at verse 20. In your patience possess ye your souls. That's how I know I'm saved, Brother Dwight. Because I ain't giving up and I ain't turned around. I'm not saying the enemy's too big. I'm not saying it ain't worth the fight. I'm not saying, you know what, let the mega church handle that. The mega church, I'm worried about them as much as I am the small church. I, I say this. Just be a church. Amen. Don't back up on that Word of God. Don't That's compromise right. it no That's more. Right. When, people, when people say, you know, what are, what are you going to do? I, I'm going to stand on the Word of God. Yes. Why would you do that? You'll be hated of all men. You'll be railed against and persecution and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but in this patience, I possess my soul. Because one day after a while, that trumpet will sound. Hell, every day I want hell run, won't they? That will run down. To the rocks, the Bible said they'll go in the cave and pray that that cave will fall on them. But the Bible says that rock will not fall on them. It says death shall escape them. How would you like to be in a place like that where you just wish you could die, but you can't even die because you're still going to bow and you're still going to confess that He is the Lord of Lords? Oh my God, I'm telling you. Stand with me this morning. If you're here this morning and you receive these words, come and pray for power. Come and pray for power. That's all I know to tell you this morning. We're the upper room. That's why Jesus said, Tarry ye here until you're endued with power. If you don't think you got power, that's okay. Uh, that's okay because even the Bible says let the weak say they are strong. Oh my God, I, I'm going to tarry until I've got something. I don't know what giant you're facing. You may not have to go to Iowa. You may not have to go to Houston nor Dallas. You may just have to stand in your own home and say, you know what? I, I, I just need the power in my own house. You may be fighting something in your body and you may be feeling weak and saying, I can't even function. I don't have the strength no more. I'm sick. You need to stay until you get power. The Jesus told him to tarry ye here until you're in due with power from on high. I'm not talking about power from a subpoena or from a, a supreme court. I'm talking about power that's supernatural. I'm talking about power that will come into you and can give you the strength to make it from one day to the next. I can't change what they put on CNN or Fox News, but I do have the power to change me. I have the power to say that no still means no, and yes still means yes. I have the power to say that's good and that's not, and decide which way I'm going to choose to go. If you're here this morning, because I preached that He'll weaken the nation. And you're weak. Come oh, in a moment or two, Becky. Get some singers ready.